Terminal Crash Course. This nugget is where we're going to get underneath the hood in Mac OS X and use its built-in Unix terminal window to uh, kind of manipulate the operating system from underneath. We'll start by just a brief crash course, how to navigate and get around, uh, and look at some of the preferences that you can use to set up terminal to behave the way you want. We'll talk about how really everything in Mac OS X, because it's a Unix operating system, is all about files and folders. Even things that you might not think about being files and folders, like a network connection, really look like files and folders. We'll look at some cool tools and some neat tricks that you can use to accomplish certain things, and we're going to look at some of the, the security aspects of Terminal by the sudo command, and uh, really lots more. So we're going to have uh, some fun stuff and some cool stuff and some useful stuff all wrapped into one. Let's get started. Well, I guess the best way to begin is to just open up a terminal window. Get it out here. You can see that this is uh, using a bash shell. And I want to just, before we actually dive in, kind of go through some of its preferences. Um, over here at Startup, you can open a new window with basic settings. Um, you can open the shell with the default login shell or a particular shell. Um, in this case, Bash is going to be the, to run the same one because that is my default login shell. And here are my settings. Uh, so over here where it said open with, with what settings, basic, grass, homebrew, and so forth, these are where you define those settings. Um, this is saying I'm not going to anti-alias the text, I'm going to make the window this size, uh, I'm going to you know, run this particular command when the shell exits, uh, go ahead and close the window, uh, prompt before closing if there are processes running other than these ones, um, how do I want any keyboard mappings to work, a few advanced things um, that just sort of control how that, you know, whether or not the bell uh, character is an audible ding or it's a visual uh, sort of flashing of the screen. Different color situations, you can see these different ones are changing some of the, the color schemes and so forth. Uh, so we're going to stick with basic. Um, window groups, you can create groups of, of more than one terminal window. Um, saving a window group so that you can bring up several different tools at the same time in a window group, kind of like a tab group within your web browser. And then uh, encodings for international text, which, which different encoding pages are you going to support. Now the shell menu uh, has a few sort of uh, basic commands for running. I can open up a new window in any of the previous settings, or any of the settings I've defined. I can create a new tab in this window. So if I do this, you see this actually takes on a tabbed appearance, uh, which is really neat for running you know, multiple different things. Um, I can define a new command, a new remote connection to another Mac, um, export the text that's in here into a text file. I can show an inspector that lets me see some of the, the basic uh, things that are going on, change the settings to a different setup whatever I want to do. So kind of a lot of neat things to you know play with in terms of the uh, the visual appearance and so forth. But now let's dive in to actually using the thing. One of the first things you're going to notice, uh, especially if you're familiar with uh, Windows command line shells like Windows PowerShell or especially the the MS-DOS style command.exe is that there are different commands and different procedures here. This is a Unix shell, not DOS. So typing dir will not get you any love. The command is ls. Um, some commands are the same, like cd, um, but it's not the backslash character for separating paths. You can see that this just sort of goes into a, a bad place. Um, it's the forward slash character, so that will change up one. So if I get an ls now, you can see that I'm at the top level of my, uh, my drives here. Um, I've got my system drive, or my system folder, applications folder, volumes, all the top level stuff. I want to point something out though. If I go into Finder, which is sort of a graphical way to explore this same file system, you'll notice that at the top level, I've got Applications, Developer, Library, System, and so forth. You'll see these things here. Application, Developer, Library, System, and so on. But you've got other things here. Network, Volumes, that don't show up here. In the Unix operating system, pretty much everything looks like a file or a folder, including disk drives and the network. So if I CD volumes and get an ls. This is a list of the volumes on my computer. External, which is an external USB hard drive. 
Macintosh HD, Time Capsule, which is out there on the network. These are the things that are showing up under Devices and Shared. So you can see that Finder is kind of massaging what the file system actually looks like to show you kind of an adapted, maybe a friendlier, more hierarchical view. Once you're down in Terminal, though, you've got to be aware of what the actual layout looks like. So if I go up one level and then CD Network, Okay, there's nothing there, so I don't have any direct network connections right at the moment, which is fine. Um, you'll also see other things in here, cores, bin, uh, private, net. Uh, if we CD net, you can see that I've got local host and broadcast host, two network hosts that are attached to this computer. So everything in the Unix operating system ultimately comes down to looking like a file or a folder. To get to your home folder, you need to know the path to get there. Um, we're already in the uh, the Macintosh HD volume, so I should be able to CD users, and then I see the shared user and the Jeepdon, which is the login account I created. So I'm going to CD to that folder, and then you can see I've got my desktop folder, my documents folder, downloads, and so forth. This is where the structure starts to mimic what you're looking at here: users. There's my home folder, desktop documents, downloads, and so forth. If I click on documents over here, it goes into documents. And if I CD documents here and get an LS, it's the same things. Um, you can do all of that. Let's go back to the top level, all in one. Uh, CD users. Provided you're remembering to use the forward slash as a path separator and not the backslash. The backslash in Unix is actually an escape character, so it will have a completely different function than what you might be used to. So now let's just cover some, some useful tricks. Oops, right, CLS doesn't work because we're not in the command.exe shell. Gotta remember that, right. Uh, so, well, I wonder if something like ping would work. Ping localhost. Oh good, the ping command is still there. There's a trick to this though. Um, you'll notice in Windows, uh, ping only pings four times by default, and this is up to 11, 12, 13, okay. So Control C will make that stop happening. Uh, we can trace route, I'm going to trace route to msn.com. Uh, I think it's kind of mean to make an Apple trace route to the Microsoft website, but you know, hey, that's irony for you. Uh, and so that trace route is proceeding. Once it gets to this sticky bit here and I get bored, I can hit Control C to get out of that. So trace route still works. Um, what about things like getting a list of processes? I can run top, and this is the top number of processes, and interestingly, it's the top number that will fit in the screen. So if I hit um, Control C, it'll exit out of this, go back to the commands I've run before. Let me make the window a little bigger, and then run top again. So you can see now I get more processes on the screen. Um, if you need to kill a process, the way I like to do it is by process name. So I'll kill all finders. Now it said no matching processes. Here's the trick. Um, not only is this not command.exe, it's Unix, uh, it's also case sensitive. Kill all finder with a capital F, and you see that my finder application just went away. Now the Mac is smart enough with that particular process to uh, relaunch finder afterwards, which is why you saw my Macintosh hard drive blip back into existence there. Uh, so that's how you can kind of work with processes and things like that. Here's an interesting thing. Uh, if I run top dash question mark, whoops, get back in the window here, top dash question mark. This will give me some basic help for the command. Um, basic syntax, it's not really telling me much, so here's the way almost every single command in the Unix shell provides so that you can get complete help. Man stands for manual top. Here's the synopsis. Okay, this displays and updates sorted information about processes. Um, that's great synopsis and everything else. I'm going to hit enter, and hit space to get a full page, and it starts to explain what each of these does, and I can space through this explaining how everything works, and you can see that this is pretty detailed help. Um, there's a lot of information in here, including different examples. So uh, it's, it's definitely a, a good thing to remember, and don't be afraid to read that manual. 
hitting control Z will take you out of the manual and uh, back into whatever you were doing. So you can actually uh, kind of, you think of it as two different screens. That was an application man that came up and it was overlaying all of this text. Uh, and then when I hit control Z, it exited and all the command text I had been typing came back. Okay, the next trick is kind of analogous to messing with the Windows registry. So I, I, I need to put out the standard disclaimer that you can really, really mess up your machine by doing this. So be careful. Um, but the thing I want to talk about is uh, Finder. In Finder, if a file name begins with a period, Finder treats it as a hidden file and it won't display it. There might be times, however, when you want those hidden files to be displayed. And so I went on Safari and I looked for the trick. Uh, and here is the trick you need to change what is essentially a registry setting. It's a preference uh, and the way to do that is to run defaults and tell it you want to write and the preference you want to write is com apple finder. Um, so that's the application finder which is from apple.com uh, kind of a reverse naming syntax there. I want to change the apple show all files to true and then I need to reboot Finder to do that. So kill all Finder again uh, and let Finder reboot. And now on my desktop I would see any hidden files or anything that were there. Uh, it's probably going to become annoying after a while so you might want to hit the up arrow and go back and change that to false after you deal with whatever file it is you're dealing with and then you can kill all Finder again. And then that'll come up and reboot. And so this is, you'll see this a lot. You'll see a lot of little tips and tricks online that, that tell you to use this defaults right. And just understand that that's all it's doing. Um, there's not really a GUI way to get in and do that. Now, you'll find that sometimes um, some of your, your commands that you need to run, and, and depending on what default you're writing, even this default one may run into the situation, you don't have permission to do it even though you might be logged on as as an administrative style user. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of set up a scenario and to do that I'm going to close terminal I am going to reopen terminal just to make sure it's opening under a plain window and if there was a command, let's say uh, for some reason I needed to run uh, a top command and I didn't have permission to do that and I want to sort of force it to run that as the super user I would type super user do top uh, and it's it's people pronounce it sudo but it stands for super user do and then you give it the command you want it to do and you can string whatever parameters after that command are necessary to make it work you will be prompted for the password for your account, your super user account, and then this command is now running as the super user. And so it's it's vaguely like run as in Windows. You always are going to be prompted for that password. In fact, let's look at the manual for sudo. Executes a command as another user. Um, you've got different parameters that would allow you to specify uh, a specific username, dash u over here, uh, if there was a different one. So, I mean, this, this is vaguely like run as, um, as it's executed in Windows. Um, the only difference, uh, well, I guess it's not a difference, but the thing you have to remember is there's no parameter to pass it the password. You're always going to be prompted for the password. Um, so that's definitely a neat trick. If you try to do something and it says access denied, you may need to just sudo it uh, instead so that you can get the proper permissions. Okay, so the next things I'm going to show you are, are just some, uh, some little tips and tricks, things that you can do from terminal to help kind of, you know, tune up your Mac or, or do cool stuff. And one of them, in the previous nugget, if you remember, we talked about time machine. And I said that you couldn't change that, that one hour interval. Well, it turns out you can. Um, this is something that we need to run as sudo. Make sure I'm in the window here. So we're going to sudo defaults write system library launch demons. Make sure you spell that right. Oh, and it is case sensitive here, so get all the casing correct. Backup d dash auto start interval and the integer instead of 
1800 seconds is going to be 3600 seconds, so I can make it double the interval. It is sudo, so it's going to ask me for my password, which I will provide. And now I've changed that time machine interval. So a pretty neat little you know, trick if uh, maybe you want to make it occur more frequently or less frequently, depending on what maybe your drive constraints are and everything else. And again, something you can only do from terminal. Terminal also offers a complete command line FTP client. So I can FTP and I'll just tell it to open my FTP server. And then you would log in with your name and your password and, and use it pretty much like any standard Unix style FTP client. Um, I'm actually going to blow past the username and password so it's going to fail the login. Um, I'll tell it bye to make sure I'm disconnected from the server. And uh, then I'm out of the FTP program and I'm actually back at terminal. So having that FTP capability there is kind of nice. Um, there's obviously tons of graphical clients for FTP, and, and you can actually connect Finder directly to the, uh, uh, an FTP server using the FTP protocol, but sometimes being able to get in at this low level and being able to type individual commands and see exactly what's happening uh, can help you solve a tricky situation that the GUI tools might kind of hide or, or, or blur over some of the details and make it a little bit more difficult to figure out what's really going on. And another trick, um, let's say you've got a, a really big file, maybe a, a large zip file that you want to burn off to disk, and you can't quite figure out where to do that. Because I admit that in, in the graphical user interface, um, getting a file, creating a new image, putting the file onto the image, burning the image, is a little bit non-intuitive. There's a super easy way to do it. Uh, dr, disk recorder, util, burn, and then just type whatever file name it is that you want to burn. Now I don't actually have a, a, a disk in my drive right now to burn to, but that will do it. The other thing that's kind of neat, um, and this is a great thing if you're using your Mac with a non-Apple keyboard, is uh, let's back out of here, is to do drutil eject. Just run that and it will eject whatever's in your, uh, your optical drive. So another kind of neat little trick. Again, there's so much that you can actually get into with Terminal uh, when you're down at this low level of the operating system. I could literally sit here all day and show you cool little tricks. In fact, I think the last trick I'll show you, let me uh, close Terminal here because this is a Terminal trick that you don't need to be in Terminal to see. Let me pull up my web browser. Where's Safari? There we go. Oops, didn't mean to minimize it there. Let's uh, go to the unofficial Apple weblog, to Al, and they have a little search box here, and just type terminal tip, hit enter, oops, terminal tip, not top, get rid of that, terminal tip, tip, it'll come up with a whole list of terminal tips. Um, tons of fun stuff that you can do, um, really useful stuff, um, things to configure the operating system, things to uh, repair certain things that may have gone wrong or um, uh, have just gotten kind of degraded over time to kind of reset things to the beginning. Uh, and there's tons of these things in here and it is definitely worth your time to go spend some time and, and look at some of these things and review them and, and kind of bookmark the ones that are really cool and you can start to build up a, a neat little library of, of really useful terminal tips in a fairly short period of time. This nugget was the terminal crash course. Uh, we looked at how to navigate in the show. We looked at some neat tricks and some cool tools like modifying system defaults and so forth. We saw how really everything comes down to being a file in a folder and it's all accessible from within the terminal window. When you need to do something that maybe you don't have permission to do but another user account does, you can use super user do, sudo, and you can run the command that way. And uh, really, just lots more stuff. We saw all kinds of miscellaneous cool tricks. And I think one of the most important things is to remember, tuow.com. They publish a bunch of great terminal tips, so there's, there's ways to accomplish lots of things that maybe the Mac uh, graphical user interface doesn't expose you to, and those guys can help you figure out what that is. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.